It was December of last year when I was flying this very drone on top of Beagle Mati Lake. I was cruising and was mesmerized by the beautiful landscape of Kazakhstan and my drone was capturing some banger shots for YouTube and Instagram. I was looking at my OSD and it was time to bring this drone back because the battery was running low. Suddenly something happened. Something because of which I almost lost my favorite drone. Something that could have been avoided. Hi, my name is Ayan and on this channel I talk about tech, travel, transform and epitome of everything that helps you achieve creative freedom and location independence. So if you resonate with any of that, do smash that subscribe button. I am in the FPV game for almost a decade and seeing the excitement on the faces of new pilot when they first fly their drone never gets old. But I'm also in the game for this long that I understand that this excitement can be very much turned into a gloomy day if you are making some common mistakes that most of the common beginner pilots as well as the advanced pilot makes. In this video, I'll talk about top 5 mistakes that every beginner pilot have made when starting their journey in FPV and the good news is they can be easily avoided. So stay till the very end because I'm gonna share one extra bonus tip that will make your FPV journey very smooth. Let's get started. Alright, so the beginner mistake that I'm going to be talking about in this video and sharing some tips can potentially save you thousands and thousands of rupees and make your FPV journey really smooth. But if you have any questions regarding these or any other thing related to FPV, do comment it down below and I will do my best to answer it. Or you can also follow me on Instagram and DM me there. Alright, so let's start with mistake number 5 and that is buying cheap parts. So I receive almost hundreds of weekly DMs, people asking me to make a new drone build series where I talk about how to make drone under 10,000 rupees, 15,000, 20, 25,000. And if you have sent me a message like that, then you must be aware that my answer has always been that FPV is not a cheap hobby and don't try to make it one. So what I always suggest to beginners and I highly recommend this to everyone listening to this video that if you want to get into the FPV, then have some budget to buy decent quality parts, but don't go for cheap parts because for example if you're flying drone at 100 miles per hour and if you have a cheap video transmitter or a very basic linear antenna on top of that drone there are high chances that you will lose the video and when you lose the video you cannot fly the drone and you have to crash your drone basically all the money that you have put into building it going waste and you have to buy again or you will just lose the hobby which is not a good experience so my first recommendation to everyone listening out there is don't buy cheap parts on fpv if you want to get started with the hobby if you are already in the hobby then buy some at least decent parts one other thing that i also like to mention that i am never against buying second hand parts as long as they're in the good condition and they're good quality so there are a lot of people in the community that are selling their old drone parts because they are no longer using it or they have upgraded it so look for those parts and if you don't have a budget at least buy by decent second hand parts compared to new parts which are very mediocre or a very low grade quality. Moving to next mistake that beginner FPV pilot makes, number 4 is chasing that perfect build and tweaking a lot of things. So these things goes hand in hand and often times lot of beginner pilots they keep on tweaking a lot of things in hardware, in software to get that perfect drone which doesn't really exist out there. So there is no definition of a perfect drone. A perfect drone in my opinion is something that flies great for you and that gives you a great FPV experience. And I have also been guilty of this so many times because I always wanted to have the latest and the greatest firmware. I always wanted to have that latest hype train motors the best receiver out there, the best transmitter, more power in my transmitter, good video transmitters, best antennas that you could import from US. And because of this attitude, you can surely become a good drone builder, but you will never become a good drone pilot because you will be chasing that perfect build that never exists. And as I mentioned, I have also been guilty of doing this mistake. Whenever a new beta flight firmware rolled, I have to update my flight controller. That means I have to change everything because whenever there is a latest release in beta flight, they change a lot of things and you have to tweak to make your drone best. Oftentimes we make tweakings on PIDs even if our drone flying great. We change the gain of anti-gravity. Sometimes we keep changing our rates to see what's working and what's not. And some given time we make multiple changes at one go and we cannot really recall what was the change that we did in software that is affecting our drone and we end up having a really bad experience in FPV. So my recommendation to every beginner pilot out there listening who want to get into the FPV is don't chase that uh, uh, perfect build that doesn't exist just make a drone that is decent enough to fly that is decent for you to give the great fpv experience if you have a mission to make drone that could carry gopro so you can make cinematic videos once you do that 
stick with it. Don't try to upgrade every firmware on your remote controller or on your beta flight unless and until there are some bugs and you really want to fix it and your work is uh, impacted because of that. Don't try to change it. Moving to the next common beginner mistake number three is not practicing enough. So what I am recently seeing in the community these days, especially with the young FPV pilots who are just joining the hobby is they make a drone, they put a GoPro and the next day they will take a flight to Leh and Ladakh and they want to shoot cinematic videos long range in the mountains and do all sort of crazy things. Now this sounds really cool when you can do that but at the same time this hobby requires a lot and lot of practice so you become a good drone pilot and you don't take unnecessary risks that will put other people uh, life and recreation activities in danger. So what I really mean by that is it's good if you have built an FPV drone but now the real journey begins. It doesn't end by building a drone so you have to put lot and lot of time in practicing whether you are doing it on a simulator whether you are flying four packs daily which i used to do back in my days i just used to go in the park and fly four to six packs daily almost uh, every day and i did that for almost uh, six months and that's how i become a good fpv pilot and now i can go and i can fly comfortably in all this location but uh, this new wave of pilots that are joining the fpv community they are somehow impatient and uh, being hesitant of doing that so i highly recommend to every everyone that be patient take some time or uh, learn the nitty-gritty and nuances of this hobby spend some time on the simulator and at the same time go out and fly multiple packs daily till you feel that you are comfortable and know all the nitty-gritty nuances of your drone this is really important because this is the only thing that will make you a good drone pilot and if you are crashing every flight that you are taking then you still need to do a lot of practice and a good marker to understand that when you are ready to do this sort of trip is if you are going out and you are flying multiple packs every Every day, let's say 10 12 different packs and if you are not crashing then that is a good measure that now you are ready to level up now you are ready to graduate but until then if you are going out and crashing on daily basis and breaking a lot of propellers then my friend you need more practice so do that all right moving to beginner mistake number two is not understanding your rates I recently actually posted on my Instagram story that uh, flirt with your PIDs but marry your rates and this is such a powerful statement in my opinion because no matter what firmware you are flying, no matter the uh, hardware that you are flying in today's time, if you are buying decent hardware, then you don't really have to worry about PIDs because beta flight, all this hardware, they have come a long way and they are so fast and so reliable in today's time that if you just fly the default beta flight PIDs out of the box or any other uh, decent uh, latest uh, firmware, then you will be good to go. Often sometimes you don't even have to change anything because default PIDs are so great these days. But what people really miss is understanding how the rates work and the rates are the most personal and the most most important things in my opinion and for a very very long time I also uh, neglected my rates and that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made. So in layman's term what the rate means is the rotations per degree per axis when I do a full stick deflection. So when you are tweaking your rates you are actually doing two things. Number one is uh, defining the sensitivity at the center stick that means how sensitive you want your drone to be when you are doing small movements around the center and and you're also defining the total degree per seconds per rotation and what I mean by that is this is a roll axis and if I do full stick deflection how much degree per second you want your drone to rotate on roll axis and this can vary from let's say 360 degree per second to all the way up to 1800 degrees 1300 1200 degrees per second uh, and depending on that uh, that defines what kind of pilot what kind of uh, mission you want to take with FPV for example if you are a cinematic pilot then you want a very uh, low rates in terms that you do not want uh, high degrees per second of rotation and you want a very smooth stick response you do not want uh, high sensitive sticks at the center and on the other hand if you are a, a freestyle pilot FPV pilot like Mr. Steel then uh, Mr. Steel runs on a very high rate almost 1100 and 1200 degrees per second uh, so it totally depends on what kind of pilot you want to become and that is why any firmware like beta flight cannot define rates for you they will give you a good starting point but you have to work on the rates and get the perfect rate and once you get your perfect rates, perfect center stick sensitivity, perfect maximum degrees per second of rotation that you need, marry that rates. And that is the most important lesson that I want you 
to take away from this video that rates are the most important things in FPV and once you find the perfect rates marry that rates all right before I give you that bonus tip let's talk about the number one mistake that beginner as well as the advanced drone pilot makes when it comes to FPV and that is not factoring the location awareness and that was the reason I almost lost this drone in Almaty Kazakhstan so let's talk about this and how you can avoid that because this one is really important so let me break down what I mean by location awareness so suppose you are going on an FPV mission and as soon as you reach that location the first thing that you do is power up your drone and send it for the FPV flight and this is in my opinion one of the biggest mistake that you can do as an FPV drone pilot because you haven't scouted that location you are not aware about different elements in that location the location might have a lot of different trees because of which the signal will be weak the location might have a lot of different complications where your drone can get uh, uh, stuck your drone can get uh, crashed the location might be something that you uh, cannot easily find your way back home on the goggles because everything looks similar that exactly happened to me in Big Almaty Lake I thought okay I'm just sending my drone straight and that's gonna fly back but when I was flying back the location and I was not visible to myself in the FPV feed and the location back home was so similar that everywhere I saw I just see trees filled with snow and it was really really hard for me to find my way back home until at the very last moment when I was uh, losing all the hope I just give a full punch out and then I could hear my drone from my ears and my spotters who were with me they were able to see the drone and in the very last minute I could finally bring my drone back uh, flying line of sight at the very last uh, because I almost uh, lost the FPV feed and the drone was going all sort of directions and that was a really scary experience in my opinion so in a nutshell whenever you go to a new location instead of just flying your drone right away take some time be patient look around see what could go wrong with your drone are there trees are there something that could block your signals or do you have a spotter if you fly your drone straight to the mountains can you figure out the way back home and after you are confident with all those things you can do another thing which is very important and that is you can add GPS to the drone and that is the first thing that I did after I came back from Almaty I added a GPS in my drone and because of this GPS before flying the drone I asked for satellite lock and once the drone has satellite locks it will show me an arrow on my on-screen display where my launch point is and using that arrow I can navigate back to my home just in case I lost the sense of direction and where I am flying. So this thing is really important and don't underestimate it, especially if you're a beginner drone pilot. Whenever you go to a new location, scout it first and put GPS on your drone, especially if it has expensive O3 system like mine. Have a GPS lock and then fly. This will make your life much easier and vastly reduces the chance of you losing drone. All right, so we covered top five mistakes beginner FPV drone pilot makes and now it's time for my bonus tip. And this is the mistake that beginners as well as advanced drone pilots make and that is not joining the communities. So I highly recommend everyone if you are into FPV and if you are not part of any community then do join the community because it's no fun flying alone. Uh, find pilots in your city, make a WhatsApp group with them, go out and fly together, help each other grow, help each other become a better pilot, better creator, better drone builder. You can also join online communities. There are a lot of them available on WhatsApp, on Instagram, uh, on different places. And if you don't have a community in your vicinity, in your area, then I highly recommend that you start on your own and start teaching people FPV. Especially in a country like India, I see there are a lot of competitions out there and people think that that FPV drone pilot is my competitor if he is getting a gig then I will not get a gig and that is a scarcity mindset that we need to get rid of there are a lot of opportunities out there for everyone have an abundant mindset help as much as possible to other people and you will always find the opportunities for yourself because there are actually a lot of opportunities out there for everyone so yeah that was all I wanted to cover on this video I hope you really enjoyed it I hope you really learned something new if you did do leave a like below and if you haven't already do subscribe to the channel and on that that note i'm gonna see you in the next one